Alrighty, I got this little cardboard box at my local craft store. I think I found it at Michael's for somewhere around a dollar, dollar and change. And I painted it red with some generic acrylic paint that I found in the same shopping trip. Some parts of it have two coats, some parts of it have one coat. And then I'm gonna cover it with this magenta pearl clay that I will texture. I'm gonna make a piece for the top, uh, several small tiles to put around here, and then also around here. So that's what we're working on right now. And I'm going to try this blue russet mica powder and see what it looks like. If I don't like it, we won't use it on this project. So I have, I have conditioned about a quarter of a bar of magenta pearl. And this is the pattern that I want to use. This was just a set of texture sheets that I found there at Michael's craft store. Not quite ready for the tile just yet. This will be the back, so it's okay if it has a little bit of mica powder on it. And how I do that is the way I've seen Ludmilla do it. She uses a foam cosmetic sponge to press the clay into the mold. Samantha Burroughs presses the clay into the mold also, but she uses her fingers exclusively. kind of see a little bit of the pattern coming through the back. And I want to see if this will give me a mica shift. I might not have run it through the, the roller enough times. We'll see. We're getting a little bit of mica shift. Ordinarily, I would fast forward through something that takes this long, but I think it's important to see how you take care with shaving your texture off in the mica shift process. And now I'm going to burnish the surface to make it even more smooth. 
I'm using a piece of food grade plastic wrap, food service plastic, that doesn't react with the polymer clay. You have to be careful what plastics you use with polymer clay because some of them react, but this food plastic doesn't. Now I'm going to further burnish this with the acrylic roller on top of the food plastic. You can also do this burnishing with a simple piece of printer paper Nice and smooth. Yeah. Once you're satisfied with how smooth it is from burnishing, then you can roll it out just a little bit more with your acrylic roller. This is just to smooth it out just a little bit more. I wouldn't put it through the pasta machine because that would distort the design. Now we're going to turn it over and put it face down and then put the box lid on there and trace the box lid onto this piece of clay. Now we'll lift this from the glass surface to check the fit again and lay it on our baking tile. This lid is just about exactly one half inch deep and when it sits on the box, the part of the box that will be covered is almost one inch deep. So I'm going to condition a little bit more of this magenta pearl clay and roll it out and texture it and then cut it into half inch strip that I will then cut into tiles and then just under one inch that I will cut into tiles. We're going to leave these textured. I'm going to line my blade up on the lines and then just come straight down. Let's take a few of these little bitty scraps and try some of this blue russet, see what it looks like. I can't really tell. It really just looks like a metallic hot pink to me. Well, I don't think I'm going to use it for this. You see, when I put them on here, I'm going to put them on in a random way. I'm not trying to preserve a design. I'm only trying to decorate this edge. Here they are. These are the ones that will go on the sides. These are the ones that will go on the lid and this goes on the top of the lid. It has a nice mica shift. I'm not sure if you can quite see that in the camera. We're going to go put these in the oven at the recommended temperature for mm, I think 45 minutes on these. Okay, these are out of the oven now, and I'm going to get them off these tiles and onto a silicone surface and resin them. They're pretty easy to remove from the tile by taking one of your clay blades and inserting just under the edge and uh, be, be mindful of where your hands are. Don't cut yourself with these sharp blades. If you have some that kind of stuck together in baking, you can break them apart. This silicone resin mat that I'm using is actually sold in the housewares department as a hot pad. But it's silicone and it's got those spaces down below for excess resin to fall to. And so it is excellent for our purposes one layer deep and not touching each other when we get ready to resin. There we go. Very good. So now we're going to mix up some resin. 
this resin here is two parts resin to one part hardener. So you need to do a little bit of math to make sure you have that right. 10 and 5. And then I keep a Sharpie marker handy somewhere. Where is Mr. Sharpie? Right there he is. A black Sharpie marker. <clears throat> and I actually mark the side of my mixing cup so that I'm real clear about exactly how much resin to put. So we'll go with 10 cc's of resin and 5 of hardener. I do this with gloves. I'll pull my sleeves up. It takes a while for the resin to get down into the tip. Just fill it to that first 10 cc line. Never fails when I start doing this, my nose itches. Does that ever happen to you? We're almost there. Okay. There's 10 cc's of resin. That is Resin Obsession Super Clear Resin. And it is, too. I mean it. Now here's our hardener. The hardener is a bit thinner than the resin, so it comes out more readily. It uh, leaves a little spillage on the outside of the bottle and uh, forms a crust, so be careful with it. And now we're going to fill it to that 15 cc line. It doesn't take much. So there's the line. All right. Now we'll take our flat sided stir stick and start stirring gently. You don't want to incorporate a lot of air bubbles into this. Just begin to gently stir. And the first thing it does as it begins to swirl together is it starts to look cloudy. Don't forget to scrape the sides and the bottom of your mixing cup. Alrighty, and we'll just mix this for two minutes. And there's our timer. Thank you, timer. So we're going to let some of those settle out just a little bit. And while we do that, we'll get us an alcohol pad or a paper towel and some, well, I said alcohol pad, that's really a gauze pad. I'm going to spray alcohol on it. Get it pretty well saturated because it evaporates so readily. Have this nice for your, for your cleaning purposes, tidying up. Now we'll make sure that none of our tiles are touching each other. Mom, her pajamas are touching my pajamas. <laughs> none of that here. I'm going to use this mixing stick to apply resin to these tiny tiles. I might go ahead and just give it one little burst to break those bubbles. When you're working with a torch, the part of the flame, the tip of that blue flame closest to the torch is the hottest. So you want to use the part of the flame that's farther away. So we knocked some of the bubbles off the top surface of the resin. And I will start at the tile farthest from me and move towards me. Drop. Apply a drop or two. A resin to the tile <clears throat> and then you can spread it about. They will travel pretty readily so it's good to have a, a pick of some kind to hold it down so that it doesn't move around on you. Once you've got the resin applied, you need to leave it a minimum of 12 hours to cure. 
And I did that, and when the tiles were cured, I was too impatient to go get my phone to record the process of gluing the tiles on the box. So we don't have that part of the process in this video, but here is the finished product. Isn't it lovely? It's amazing how much difference that resin makes. It really brings out the sparkle of that pearlescent clay. And get a load of that mica shift pattern on the top of the box. Isn't that something? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I sure enjoyed making this project. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like and share. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.